Who says relationships have to happen in order? The Time Traveler's Wife. I can't promise that I will do episode-by-episode episode reviews throughout this whole thing. It might just be this and maybe my thoughts after it's done, assuming I stick with it. But I have seen the premiere. So this is based off a novel that I read a while back. I was living in New York when I read this. And um, I also um, quite remember enjoying it a lot. I remember thinking the way that the time travel worked was really interesting. The impacts and fallout and consequences of not only the logistics, but also the nature of the relationship felt really well thought out. The characters were very well fleshed out. I liked the book a lot. I also haven't read it in, I don't know, 14 years? Ballpark, at a guess. But um, my memory, again, is that I liked it. And this is a new adaptation that is written by Stephen Moffat, who probably took a few um, clues and ideas from it when he came up with River Song back when he was writing Doctor Who. So, kind of a natural fit. Moffat uh, seems to have done a decent job uh, restraining himself here. I think part of that has to do with he's working off pre-existing material. I can get a sense of the adaptation because I remember how the original book opened and this sort of, it has that, but it also kind of eases folks into it a little bit more. It, I'll be curious to see if sort of the opening framing of like the two of them giving an interview, like to a, like to somebody asking them questions, if that's going to keep showing up or not, because that's a potentially interesting framing device to keep using for the whole time. So I hope it's not just a gimmick. Um, but we have uh, Claire and Henry, and uh, they're pretty, I like Claire a lot. Uh, the actress who was the same actress who played Ygritte in uh, Game of Thrones, she's really good in this part. And and Claire, Claire's a hard character to get right because if you do it wrong, she comes across as like almost a kind of creepy fangirl, especially at the very front end of the book. Um, I never got that impression of her, but I've talked to people who have. And I get why, depending on the tone you read into it. So it's definitely possible to have it come across not great, but she brings a lot of strength and energy and playfulness and just a sense of being very certain of what it is she wants out of her life. And that is exactly what this character needs. Henry is fine. Um, I'm not as familiar with this actor and his American accent is not amazing. I got used to it. Uh, and also the aging makeup for when we have older versions of Henry is also not great. But I found that those things um, were uh, bothering me less and less over time. He has good um, chemistry with Claire, which, wow, did they need that? Because if that wasn't the case, everything was going to fall apart. But uh, the way that he alters his performance for when he's playing Henry at different ages, in a way that is still identifiable as the same guy, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, you can tell he's got more experience behind him when he's playing this part versus when he's playing that one. And the uh, amount of introductions that we get in terms of, you know, the, the quirks, the logistics, uh, how Henry figured stuff out, things. This, this covers a lot more ground than I was expecting. I was kind of expecting the overall thing to be played a little bit more as a mystery. That said, we do have kind of mystery aspects, especially with the image that we have at the very end of the first episode, which I won't spoil, but I do know what that's about. So for me, that's more, uh, oh, so that's how you're presenting it, as opposed to, ooh, what's going on? I know what's going on. But um, like I said, overall, there's just a really good chemistry and a good feel from these characters because ultimately for all the time bending quirks of their existence, this is a story about two people. This is a character piece. This is a relationship story. And if that relationship isn't believable or either half of the couple just isn't uh, that engaging, well, then you're in trouble. And while I do think Claire is significantly more engaging than Henry, Henry is not dead weight. He is doing what needs to be done. It's just, I don't know, she just pulls the eye a lot more. She pulls the attention. 
Plus, her American accent's better. He does have a nice ass. I will say that. That's assuming it's his ass. It could be a body double. I realized after I texted uh, Liz that he had a nice ass that I don't think we see, he doesn't like his head turn, so we see his face and the ass in the same shot. So it could be a body double. Somebody involved in this has a nice ass. There is some masculinely shaped individual with a nice ass involved in this. I have spent way too much time talking about this guy's ass. I don't even know what to think of myself now. Well, <laughs> in any case, um, it'll be interesting to see how this paces out from here. Because, like I said, it it's covered pretty much most of the initial logistics and pitching the premise that it needs to to just move forward with the story. And I'll be curious to see what's there because that that's... I rem what I remember very strongly is especially the beginning, and I remember a number of specific beats, and I remember most of the end. But I don't remember every single thing that goes on. So I'll, I probably, as I watch, I won't be able to identify, oh, that bit's new. Oh, they cut this. I probably wouldn't be able to remember that. But at the same time, I am going to be curious to see just how they pace it out, because it's... Uh, it's a story that ha just has an unconventional structure to it by necessity. But right now, the the sense of Henry, you know, just being like, this is just my life and this is what I have to deal with. And the sense of Claire, you know, younger, at excitement at the early parts of getting to know him, and then older, you get that sense of where, just a little bit, just a little bit of like, I love you, but this really makes our lives hard. It's well played. So um, given that I'm kind of straining to even get this uh, episode out to my, uh, my, this video out to my standard length, probably not going to do um, episode reviews, episode by episode going forward. I think, again, largely just because since I already know the story, I have nothing to speculate about. I can't be like, ooh, I didn't see that. come. Like, I know what's going to happen. But um, I'll probably, if I stick with it, Circle back and uh, talk about it once I'm done. Or once it's done. Once somebody's done. I should just go to bed. <laughs> it's late. I, I've, I've had a long day. I shouldn't even be recording. I'm going to go to bed. Whatever your thoughts are on this, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon. That's what pays the bills uh, and allows me to make the decision to go to bed instead of stay up all night uh, continuing to work. Although sometimes I do that anyways. But not tonight. Tonight, I'm going to bed. And uh, even if you can't support me that way, like, share, subscribe, they'll help me out. Don't sweat it too much, though. Take a relaxed attitude around here, clearly. So just come on back next time you need a break. Hey, end credits time, which means I need to shout out some patrons. This time I'm going to be shouting out Robin Moore, Zubin Latfala, Tarak, Oliver B., Melinda Walters, Imudelki, the Otha Boy, TT, Renobulax the Poodle, Zach Paul, Eidolon, Tracy Scrabbit, Vincent Paul Bartolucci, Angry Casperl, Toku, BL Huvian, Adam RDL Taylor, Shane Ross, Shayla Gourlay, and Brendan LaRose. You want to hear me mispronounce your name? Check out rewards on the Patreon. Thanks for all your support.